Hi guys, welcome to my coffee show. My name is Jack and today we are talking about a light roast. Why is it so tricky and how to deal with it? Recently one of the viewers who is also a coffee roaster sent me a few bags of coffee to sample. Big thank you to Ron from Open Roasters. If you could do me a big favor after you finish the video, after you click like, have a look at his website. I will put the links in the description. He sent me a few very delicious coffees but this one should be very interesting. So this one is what they call a Nordic style roast like an ultra ultra light roast so that's the ultra light roast they call it a cinnamon stage because it reminds the the color of cinnamon that will be light medium and that's medium roast coffee we all know that the light roasts are tricky so the ultra light roast should be even trickier it's even tricky to pronounce this particular coffee is the coffee from kenya with tasting notes of maya lemon sugar grapefruit and a juicy mouthfeel which should be great but that depends how you deal with it in the light roast the natural sugars that in a coffee beans they didn't have time to caramelize so the coffee can be really really sour sourness in the coffee i like but with the extra light roast it may be like a battery acid sour something that if brewing correctly can prevent us from uh, tasting the other flavor notes and how to do it there are a few options because the beans are so dense the flavors are locked inside we have to find a way to get them out so you can increase the water temperature that one thing you can prolong the contact of coffee with water so like a longer pre-infusions you can increase the water flow we're going to play with two profiles i have chosen for you today one it's a blue espresso is the profile that Dyson is famous for and the other one it will be a turbo shot one of my favorite shots because it's tasty and it's also relatively easy to dial in so what's the blooming espresso how it looks like it's a kind of a flow profile we use the same principles and you would use when you do a pour over first you introduce the water so that will be like a four milliliters per second uh, water flow for the first few seconds then you reduce the water flow and that's where you have that gap so that's when the coffee is being soaked by the water the water will go through the entire pack so that that should even out the extraction with the regular extraction the top of the pack gets over extracted the bottom of the pack it usually gets under extracted and then we move the water flow to about two mils per second we should pick with the pressure at around nine bars and then we continue brewing so here is that principle that i mentioned before of extending the contact uh, of coffee with water because because of that gap we will have to grind finer here the turbo shot and we have a few different kind of style of turbo shots but the turbo shot you grind coarser and you slam the water through the coffee pack high water flow four and a half mils per second normally when you do a regular style shot even when you prepare the pack perfectly there is always a channeling always parts of the coffee pack are under extracted parts over extracted when you slam that coffee with high water flow the coffee is coarser the water finds the way through different channels so the the extraction does not look great but uh, because it, everything runs fast so we will be aiming here for about 25 seconds so many channels that it actually extracts more evenly so this is that second principle of a high water flow in both cases we are aiming to increase the fruitiness we know that this coffee will be sour but on top of the sourness we want all of those other flavor notes i think i talked enough i'm curious I haven't tasted this coffee. You are curious to see how it goes. So click like, sit tight and enjoy. In my first attempt, as you can see, I got the blooming face right, but the pressure only picked at around what? Three and a half bars. I'm not saying this is a perfect. I think the pressure dropped slightly too fast for my liking, but at least we went to the nine bars. So that's the good thing. The water flow steady as it should be. The gap pretty much as I wanted to. The entire shot took what? A minute, but half of that was the blooming face. So we've got a shot. It took me like four attempts. I had to grind really, really fine that's what you do for the blooming espresso you have to have a grinder that can grinds really really fine otherwise you either won't hit the the blooming face or the pressure won't pick so at the first few attempts the pressure was picking at three bars first time i try the coffee that it's so lightly roasted who knows what i'm going to find out cheers 
it's not as sour as I was expecting. There is definitely a sourness, but a pleasant sourness. There is a sweetness, definitely very refreshing uh, shot. Neat finish, so does not linger. Uh, lemon and, and grapefruit. Lemon definitely, grapefruit, well, there is that slight bitterness, so I would say chocolate more than a grapefruit. Lemon and chocolate, or like a lemon cake. Juicy mouthfeel, definitely. It wouldn't be a coffee you serve to your grandma, uh, unless your grandma is a coffee geek as well. It's not a coffee you would serve to someone who I don't know who is obsessed with Starbucks. If you enjoy fruity sourness in a coffee you will like it. You remember I recorded a video about the Blooming Espresso long time ago. I wasted a bag of extremely expensive coffee. I thought I can do it and I couldn't hit that uh, Blooming face. Apparently there was less, there were some like issues with that this particular profile it looks like they fix it. This was also a little bit challenging here because I am using the Wafo So Spirit uh, basket. This basket is a high flow basket. It was extra difficult again to hit those nine bars uh, after the blooming face but this basket should be perfect for the next espresso that we're going to do which is the turbo with the turbo we don't really worry that much about the pressure pressure will hit the probably six bars who knows what but we we want to keep that flow rate so with the turbo it will be the exact opposite problem you don't want to grind too finely you want to grind coarse let's see what we can get i put the temperature up slightly here otherwise i only only change the ratio so it's one to three the same as the previous shot the water flow we would like slightly higher so here we got to three let's see if i can grind coarser i want it at three and a half but you see the shots 22 seconds so what i will do i will grind even coarser but i will also add a little bit of coffee otherwise the shot would be below 20 seconds so that was my goal about three and a half at peak well you can even aim to grind a little bit coarser i'm already off the scale on my uh, cafetec mc5 hey let's taste it cheers it's good but it's different in the first shot it was there was more of that sweetness here this shot went more towards that citrusy flavor so i can definitely taste more of the grapefruit lemon then sweetness and pretty much no bitterness maybe that kind of a grapefruity bitterness um, so interesting to see the same coffee develop kind of a different flavor notes i mean the same flavor notes but in a different direction which one i prefer I think the blooming espresso was uh, was was tastier today. There was that nice sweetness. Entire shot tasted kind of like a lemon cake. But if you like the citrusy notes, all of that fruitiness, then probably you would prefer this shot. Definitely this one is uh, a bit more uh, refreshing. When you have a decent, that's what you will be doing. You will be playing with all those things. You can pull those shots on the other machines. There are ways to do it. But with decent, you have that control on every aspect. Today we were just changing the grind settings. I added a little bit of coffee to uh, extend the extraction but otherwise I wasn't changing that much the temperature in the turbo shot I put slightly higher up the end results two very nice shots but two different shots we extracted a little bit more of the grapefruitiness uh, in the turbo shot while the blooming espresso gave us more of that sweetness but there was that bitterness that was touched too high it's slightly both shots can be improved if you notice something that I should do better definitely let us know I showed you kind of a principles especially if you are new to the decent you might find those videos useful that's what we do here from time to time we experiment with different shots different profiles when i get an interesting coffee like this one i also like to play with there are other ways obviously innovative long pre-infusion shot would be one of them but they changed something with on the decent recently i was practicing yesterday with different coffee i couldn't hit the numbers londinium could be good as well just put the temperature higher up so guys first of all if you are still here if you like experimenting with the coffee definitely click like consider subscribing to the channel what is your approach to nordic style coffee if you use other machines let us know how you approach that kind of coffees once again big thank you to ron from open roasters from sending us the coffee if you are a coffee roaster if you would like to see the coffee on my channel let me know but for today thank you very much for watching my name is jack this is my coffee show and hopefully i will see you soon thank you bye